We are getting things set up here. We've gotten the first cards that you only use. The first is a huge stack of, uh, of player cards. These are your different player abilities. It's kind of a deck building thing. You only, for this beginning scenario here, scenario one, you only use the first six cards. And they're marked, there's a little crown at the top you see with an A in it. So you've got the first six cards that are marked with an A. And the demolitionist over here has his six cards as well. The same kind of thing with the A's. And they've got a little cheats. As you see, they've got the little blue things. Like this says, one ally within range two may perform attack four. And then it says in the blue, use the ally's attack modifier for this attack. Or this one down here says, move, move to strengthen range three. And then they got the little blue box. It's kind of like uh, someone referred to it as training wheels. Or refer, uh, it tells you explains what that means is move up to two hexes away you never have to move the whole thing you never have to move it all actually but move up to two hexes away then you or one ally within three hexes gains advantage on all their attacks until the end of the next turn so as you see there that's the strengthen you can strengthen an ally up to range three away so fantastic so it's nice to have those little things so you're not constantly going back to the the rule book to see what these uh what exactly that means on the cards there now we've got our hit point dial set up you go to the this is a first level board warden so you look under the one and there's a heart with six that means he's got six hit points so we've set the dial on the left the hit point dial to six the one on the right we're not using for this scenario i understand the blue one with the star there is for experience points and uh, we're not teaching us about XP yet in the Gloomhaven game. So uh, we're just doing the just doing the uh, the hit points for now. So the ward Void Warden has six. And over here, our demolitionists, they're a little bit of the tank. A little bit of the tank and the DPS, they have eight, as you see. So we've got that ready to go, too. Both of them have their damage modifier decks. One there and one here. They've both been shuffled. The Vermling Raiders are the same thing. They had their damage deck for the monsters. And then the Raider here, we're using the uh, the first level Vermling Raiders. So uh, they've been slid into the card, slid into the envelope. The envelope here has a little card. Let's see if I can get it to slide out. <laughs> it fits in tight. Just one moment here. There we go. Okay, as you see, the card here has like a one, has a two, has a three, and has a zero, depending on how tough they are. We're using card one here, Vermlin Raider. And as you see on the left side are the standards. They have five hit points, move one, and attack two. On the right side are what the elites do. They have 10 hit points, attack one, uh, move one, and attack two. And so you take it and you slide it down into the envelope. Oops, sorry. You take the card and you slide it down into the envelope like this. So that just the one part is sitting up. And that's your stats for this particular round. And down here, these 1 to 10, that's for if you've got uh, whenever they take damage. Like uh, you'll notice the Raiders here. This one has a 2 on it. And this one has a five on it. Well, if two takes damage, you put the damage icons out here. And if number five takes damage, you put the damage icons out here. And that's how you keep track of how many hit points the uh, the raiders have. Now, some people uh, put dice. They'll take a die and put a dice out here with the number up showing how many, how many hit points it has left. And that's fine, too. I don't like uh, the board to be quite that cluttered up. So... Uh, I don't have the dice. What I am thinking of those on Thingiverse, uh, one of the places has a, a standee like this that you can print, but it's got a round base with a dial and got the hit points on the dial and you just twist the base like a uh, hero clicks or something like that. So that would be a fun thing to print. And I may get around to printing that sort of thing. You'll also notice that I showed y'all I was printing the stuff. So there's the Palisade and here is the Palisade after it's been printed and had a quick coat of paint put on it. Um, very quick, very rough little coat. I just did a, a base coat and a couple of uh, couple of uh, colors over the top of it. 
Um, but it looks nice. It's still got some detail. I've still got to paint the, the you know, the little ropes there that hold the whole thing together and uh, do some work on the base. But yeah, for a rough and ready, uh, quick, uh, I think it took me, what, maybe two hours to paint all these pieces and, and the rubble pieces over here, everything together, I think took two hours to paint. So yeah, that ain't, that ain't too bad for just a, a rough, get it ready for the table, uh, paint job. Still a little detail work and all done. And I paint, posted the two boulders here as well. As I said, I like blinging my games a little bit. I like having, uh, having just a little bit more visual appeal to the board. All right, so we've got all that set up and it is set. Okay, we've got this, all right. So each player gets his player mat, each one gets his uh, first six cards. We've got our hit points set up. We've got our attack modifiers, okay. We read the one about the road back to Gloomhaven long, nasty things ignore their ranting in this quickly. The goal is to kill all the enemies. Special rules. Make sure each character's starting hand consists of the six ability cards marked A. We did that. The Vermling Raiders will act on initiative 50 each round. They will first move their base move value of 1, and then if a character is adjacent to them, attack for their base value of 2. So that tells you what their AI is going to be like. We get the map layout. shows 2 and 3. And as we see, this is page 2 and page 3. So that shows how to lay out the map. And we talked about there's another supplemental book out there. You can have up to four pages because you could lay another supplemental book out here and have four pages. You could have a very large um, map here. It's not just everything in, in Jaws of the Lion isn't confined to just these two pages. You've got another book just this size where you can extend the dungeons out if it calls for it. And as you see, the scenario key shows that we are using Vermling Raiders. All right, they've also got hints on the map itself. For instance, right here, uh, you know, this thing is, these first scenarios are full of these little hint boxes. Like I said, the blue boxes on the cards and on the map. Tip, place each of your character figures on one of the four indicated entrance hexes. You see the one, the little hexes here with the door and the arrow. So I am putting the demolitionist up first since he is our damage dealer. He's gonna wanna get into the fight and our support healer Vord Warden back here, I'm gonna uh, stand behind him. Use a little bit of a little protect, bit of protection from the tank. All right, the next one here says all hexes with a green border are obstacles and cannot be entered. So as you see on the original, that boulder picture of the border has a a green border on it. So. So that is an obstacle. The demolition can destroy them though, at which point a destruction token is placed on the obstacle and it becomes a normal hex. These are the destruction tokens. You see what they look like, basically just some rubble. So in an ordinarily, ordinarily playing, it would look like this. And then when you destroyed it, you would throw a destruction token. We're taking it another little step further than that, of course, because we're gonna have a boulder. And then if it gets destroyed, we take it away and we'll replace it with a rubble token. And I'll throw up the name of the guy that made all these, uh, the people that designed these tokens. And the nice thing about the rubble token is they're all made to be flat so that you can actually put your characters, you know, on top of them. The, the top of them are flat so that, I mean, very well detailed, but flat so that it will hold a standee or a character on it. So very nice. And the rubble here, let me get it out here. You know, if you destroy the Palisade, you got the log rubble that you will replace it with. And it is flat as well and will allow the, the characters and all to stand on it. Nicely done. Nicely done. So I'm looking forward. I've already gone forward and looked at the second book. And I'm printing up a door and some walls and uh, that sort of thing. So uh, it'll be ready to go as well. Okay, so we got that. Um, our next tip up here. Remember the icons for setting up monsters. On this hex, no monster is placed for two characters, a normal monster is placed for three characters, or an elite monster is placed for four characters. Now, since we're doing solo, we're playing with two. So we look at the icons where they start. You see it's a vermling, and it has three white bars. Now, the white bar on the top here is if you've got two characters, three characters, four characters. So there's always a raider here. Even if there's two, three, or four, there's always a white base, rather standard raider here. So that goes there. 
This one, as you see, the top bar is for two characters. It's black, so nothing goes here in a two-player game. If we had three characters or three players, we put a standard, and if we were playing all four, we'd have an elite. So that's how they toughen things up a bit. Down here is always an elite. So we've got our elite with the gold base here. And remember, in this particular instance, in this scenario, the elites just have more hit points. That's all they have. So we have another one here. There's always a standard here. There's always, well, there's a standard if two players or three players. And if four players, there's another elite. And then down here would be another elite with four players. So four-player game, we'd have a... Uh, this would be an elite, and there'd be two more elites on the board as well. So, yeah. So, we've got all that set up. Let's see. We read that tip, that tip, that tip. The other tip is for if we actually win. So, there. Okay. So, now we've got everything ready. Is that correct? That's three, four. Everything is set. Um, the only other thing, these hexes here, if you see the double hex, the double line, the black line, double line, you can't cross these. These are the walls of the scenario. Let's think of it as like a, uh, think of it as like a pass, like a railroad cutting coming through a, a bit of a valley here, and you can't climb up the walls. So, you know, nobody, none of monsters or characters can't, can't exit any of the, the double lines there anything else i think that is it so next up we're going to take a look playing the game now that the game's been set up properly we can start playing so it's broken into a number of rounds we have the game reference cards here normally each player would have one of these they're you know double-sided the round overview and stuff but one part about nice part about playing by yourself is that you can use both of them and set them out so the round overview is card selection what that means is each play, if we were playing with two players, each of us would sit here and decide what two cards we're going to use for our character that turn. Now, playing solo, you have a bit of an advantage because while we can talk strategy, like the, the demolitionist could say, well, I'm going to go forward and I'm going to attack this one. And I could say, okay, well, I'm thinking about uh, supporting that attack and possibly moving forward myself. That's fine. What you can't do is you can't tell them how many. You can't say, well, I'm going to play Wicked Scratch, which means I will let you attack. Uh, I'll get up close to you and let you do an attack of four, and then uh, I'm going to move to and I can strengthen you. Um, you can't say that. You can say something like, I'll move up, strengthen you, and let you attack an extra time. You can say that, but you can't give specifics. And you can't say something like, you, the, the numbers in the middle are going to be your initiatives. So you can't give that number. You can't say, I'm going to move on an initiative of 68. Um, you can just say something like, my, I'm going to try to go real early or somewhere in the middle, or I'm going to go late in the round. Say that sort of thing. Um, in you know, in the, the solo game here, that's not an issue because I'm going to know what each person does. You know, ordinarily you change, you uh, choose your two cards and then you lay them face down and then both of you would flip them at the same time. And whoever the high, the highest initiative level is, uh, would get their initiative markers moved. Okay, so that's how that goes. So we're going to choose the cards. And so it says, if you are unsure which cards to try, try these suggestions first for each character. For the Void Warden, they suggest Wicked Scratch and Suggestion. Okay, so we're going to take Wicked Scratch and Suggestion out here. Those are the first two of the six cards, so we still got four cards left to play. And then we got Wicked Scratch. Wicked Scratch is one ally within a range of two may perform an attack four. And the bottom half is move two and then strengthen, which is move up to two hexes away. Then one, you or one ally within three hexes gains advantage on all their attacks. Suggestion is force one enemy within a range of three to perform an attack three on an enemy of their choice adjacent to them. All right, that's pretty clear. And the other part is move three and muddle range three, which is move up to three hexes away, then one enemy within three hexes gains disadvantage on all its attacks until the end of its next turn. All right. So that's there. 
the we've already established that the vermlings are going to move on initiative 50. So we want to move before they do. So we don't want to do the 68 on the top. We're going to put the 23 on top. But that will be our initiative. And I said in a two-player game, we would not be able to tell the other player that we're moving on a 23. We just say we're going early in the round, going ahead of the vermlings. So we'd have the 23 there, and then you would turn it and put it down, like on a two-player game. That's not necessary here. Demolitionist. Okay, let me grab their cards. They say to use one-two punch and knockout supports. Looks like they're here. So we've got one-two punch and knock out the supports. Knock out the supports is attack three. And one adjacent enemy suffers three damage. So we've got to be close. We've got to be uh, up adjacent to be able to do that one. And the bottom half is move to destroy one adjacent obstacle. And if you do, perform strengthen on yourself. So gain advantage on all your attacks until the end of the next turn. One two punch is attack two and attack one. One adjacent enemy suffers two damage, then the same or different adjacent enemy suffers one damage. And then the bottom part is attack one. One adjacent enemy suffers one damage plus a modifier. Okay, so there we go. And we want to move early, so we don't want the 66, we want the 20. So we would take it, we would then lay it down, and then once we've chosen our cards both players we would flip them at the same time if this was a two-player game and we'd see the demolitionist has a 20 the void warden has a 23 so the demolitionist will move first the void warden will move second and the vermlings with 50 will move last so there you are demolitionist void warden and then vermling raider that shows our initiative this round right there okay so and they say there's other icons on the map, like these right here. They say ignore those until the next round, until the uh, the next scenario. Those are not necessary. All right, I'm going to go grab my coffee. I just got a text from the wife. So I need to answer that as well. And then we will come back. And the next thing, we've ordered the initiative. So next time will be the character turn. Sorry about that. We are recaffeinated. We've talked to the wife. Um, she needing help with the dogs again. You know, she's uh, got hands full with both Leo and little Juliet. So I'll be going over there early tonight. So let's see if we can get this play going. All right. The demolitionist is going to go first. They have the 20. So the thing with Gloomhaven, and it applies for Jaws of the Lion too, is that you have the two cards... You know, when you first flip them, the cards are for your initiative, and we've done that for 20. Now, we choose the cards. This is our action, and we choose one top and one bottom. It has to be separate cards. Um, you can't choose two tops. You can't choose two bottoms. You can't choose a top and a bottom on the same card. One card has to be a top. One card has to be a bottom. You don't have to, like attack three, we don't have to, you know, uh, let's say this, the move and the attack. Let's say we wanted to do this one and this one. We wouldn't have to do the move, we could just do the attack, but we couldn't do two attacks, we couldn't do the same on the same card. And what I'm looking at here is I'm thinking I'm going to use this one for the bottom. This one says we move two, destroy an adjacent obstacle, and then once we destroy it, we get strengthened on ourselves which would give us an advantage. Advantage and disadvantage, if you play Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, you'll know about advantage and disadvantage. Um, I was a 3.5 man. I enjoyed my big time with Dungeons and Dragons was the 3.5 version of it. And they, it, it was a great game, but man, the number of modifiers. You could literally, in a battle between a characters you could have a couple of dozen modifiers it was like well you're behind behind half cover so that's a plus two but it's it's raining so a minus one on your bow but you've got skill so that's a plus three and you could have all these modifiers you had to keep track of now it's just advantage and disadvantage they really streamlined that so it's like Okay, uh, you surprised you surprised this vermling. Let's say this was Dungeons and Dragons. 
you've got a magic sword which gives you advantage and you surprise the vermling so he's going to be at a dis disadvantage and what advantage means you know you roll 20 sided dice if you have advantage you'd roll two dice and pick the best one for you if you had disadvantage you would roll two dice and pick the worst one for you it's going to be the same way here when we have advantage and we do this attack you know we're going to pull a modifier card if we have advantage we pull two cards and take the best one if we have disadvantage we pull two cards and take the worst one so i am going to do that first so we're going to use the bottom of this one move up to two and we only really need to move one so i'm going to move there up to that obstacle and the vermling vermling number two Oh, and the vermlings, I shuffled them up. They just happened to be number two, number five, number four, and number six. They were shuffled and put down here at random. Um, partly because if you have, if whenever um, it's time for them to go, I think they go in numerical order, maybe. So like two would go, and then four would go, and then five would go. Well, the elites go first, and then I think the standards would go two, four, six, like that. I think that's right. We'll see whenever we get to monster attacks. So I've moved our Quartal Demolitionist up one. Remember, you don't have to use the full move. And then destroy one adjacent obstacle. So we are going to destroy this boulder. Take it off the map, and I'm going to replace it with the destroyed icon. And once we've done that, it we, you know, we read the description of the Demolitionist's they love, oh, they love punching and blowing st stuff up and, and smashing stuff. So it strengthens us. It gives us advantage. We get so psyched up. Now, you can lay it out here on the character. Where they tell you to put it is over here. And for right now, this is what we do. You see the conditions. We put it right there. And as you see, we are currently strengthened. So that is going to give our demolitionist advantage this turn. Okay? So... He's there, and he's strengthened. We've used the bottom of this card now, so this card will go over here on the discard. You see it says discard, so this is our discard pile, just like a deck builder. You know, when you play a card, it goes in the discard, so we put that there. So now we have to use the top part of this card if we're going to do it, and we certainly are because it gives us two attacks. So the first attack is going to be a two-point attack. So, now we choose the modifier. This like here is like what replaces a dice roll. So you pull it out. The first one is a plus zero here. But remember, we have advantage. So we get to choose a second card and take the best one. So we're going to take this plus one. So I will put those right there. That'll be our... our uh, modifier discard right over there to the side so we're going to take plus one so our first attack does three points and that is vermling number two so we're going to take a three point of damage and we're going to put it here on line two so vermling two has got three points of damage on them now we get to do a second attack either on a different adjacent enemy or the same adjacent enemy it does one point of damage, plus our modifier. Remember, we still have advantage. So one point, oh, minus one. So that goes to a zero, but we get to pick two. Oh, and it's a plus two. All right, so we are definitely going to take the plus two. So that gives us three more points of damage. Remember, a standard vermling only has five points, and this is a standard. It's the yellow base. Yellow, the, I mean, the white base. Standards are on the left. The Elite is on the right. The Elite has 10, but the Standard only has 5. We've done 6 damage, so we have killed that Vermling. I'm going to take that off, and this Vermling will go off the board, and we have killed our first Vermling. Now, I'm assuming if later in the game, I know that, that, that monsters in Gloomhaven drop loot, and they also give you can also get XP. I'm not sure if they're from each monster or whatever, but we're not worried about that. That isn't part of this. Remember, they're walking us into the rules just a step at a time. So we're gonna. That was one two punch and knock out the supports. So we are going to throw those in our discard now. Now next up, 
was the Void Warden. So the Void Warden will go next. They have Wicked Scratch, and they have Suggestion. So let's see what we're actually going to do here. Um, Wicked Scratch, we could have an ally in range 2 perform an attack, but there's nobody for him to attack now. So that isn't going to help. Um, we could force one enemy within a range of 3 to perform an attack of 3. All right, how far can we move? We could actually move. If we use that, we could move two. And so we can't get within range. We can't get within three range of any of them. Hmm. One, two, three. Yeah, none of them. So the best we can do... best we can do is I'm going to use the move on Wicked Scratch. We're going to move two. So one, two. Moved up two. And then it says strengthen anything within range three. Well, the demolitionist already has advantage. So I am going to take an advantage and we're going to put it on the Void Warden. So both of us are strengthened now from, from uh, doing that. So that's going to be the bottom half of Wicked Scratch. I will throw it over here on its discard. And now the top one. The top one is Force One Enemy within Range 3 to perform an Attack 3. Well, I don't have any enemies within Range 3. So unfortunately, we're not able to do anything with our our suggestion here. So this card, unfortunately, it gave us a good, it gave us a good initiative, but it didn't allow us to uh, actually do any attack. Nothing else happened. All right. I believe that is it for my characters. We did all the attacks, the disadvantages, etc. I think up next is uh, a mess because I've got all these things out of order. Let me arrange. Let me arrange my rule book here. I will be uh, right back. All right, we've got our our little rudimentary printed uh, how to play book put back in the correct order now. Now, the monsters are going to work. Uh, going to take their turn. They always, the elites always move first. And we've got one elite on the board. So the elite will move first and it's going to move one. Now monsters always, the, the AI for the monsters is a lot like the zombies in zombie side. They are always going to move the shortest path possible toward the um, nearest character. So. It's going to move, remember all these have a movement of one, so it is going to move one hex toward the Demolitionist and the Void Warden. Now the standard ones, its attack is a two, but it has to be adjacent, so it can't attack anybody. Now these two move in numerical order, so the one at four will go first. All right, it's going to focus in the character conform. It's tack against the least amount of movement. So let's see. It could go one, two, three, four, five, six. If it walks around this way, it's six steps to the demolitionist. If it goes around that way, remember, they can't cross obstacles until they're destroyed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It would take eight going around that way. So it is going to move this way around the obstacle as well. And then number six up here doesn't have a choice. The only place it can move is this way because the rest of them are blocked by the obstacles. So it is going to move one down here. Okay, that was the monster turn. So that is the end of the round. Let me see what happens here at the end of the round. Um, any attack modifier deck has flipped over. We didn't have any that say that it has to be reshuffled. So we're okay there. Um, okay. So we just keep going like this until, um, we run out of cards. So I am going to look at the next two Void Warden and Demolitionist cards and figure out 
what attacks I want to try to, what uh, movement and attacks I want to try for the next round here. 